can you talk a little bit to start with about the current state of the water usage in the wine industry? Mm. What's, what's right or wrong with it? What uh, is right and wrong with it is that at the moment, 83% of the uh, vines that are planted are being irrigated in the world. And I'd say most of those are in the new world and 10% are in the old world. Um, with increasing drought and increasing heat, unfortunately, people are inc increasing their irrigation. So, and irrigation is, whilst well, it's adaptation's greatest ally, it's mitigation's greatest foe. So they're shooting themselves in the foot and, and they don't quite know it. So the, the water situation is dire. And an example of that is, um, the EU water laws, because as you know, it's illegal yeah. to irrigate in, in Europe for qualitative and quantitative reasons. But the EU laws are relaxing a bit in terms of irrigation laws. They're still quite intact for the, I would say, the top quality levels, but some of the, the lower levels are allowed to uh, start irrigating. At certain times, again, it's not been implemented very well. It's not, it's not giving the wine producer very much control over their own scheduling. Yeah. Um, and But one thing they have gotten right, our most recent decree in 2017, is they are now saying that if you do irrigate, you are not allowed to go above those the old uh, restricted yields. Yeah. Dry farmers can, though, in, okay. go above the old-fashioned, you know, the, the, the old uh, yield caps, which I think is a really interesting compromise. Can you give us a, an overview of what dry farming really is? Dry farming is a practice. Yeah. It is a way to use, hold the winter rainfall in the soil so the plant can use it during the growing season. Yeah. And there, are, not everyone can do it. You, you, ideally, you want between nine and 20 inches of rainfall, winter rainfall per year. Um, and I've spoken to farmers who do it with less than that. Um, it also has to be married with the correct soil type. You want soils that hold uh, and chain water. So uh, a sandy loam might be nice, but clay is, you know, you, you, you want the right soil type, you want the right rainfall, and then you want to, the, the real trick is the soil preparation. And a lot of people who say dry farming is a bother, they, they start pointing towards the soil preparation and having to, to keep the mulch, you know, applied mulch to keep the moisture in. And, but if you think of the alternatives, you're saving on, because you're allowed to water for the first couple of years to, to get the plant uh, you know, started, that's normal. But you're not having uh, irrigation systems to install, you're not having maintenance, you're not having water costs. And with all the legislation coming in, you don't have the water uh, certificates to buy, the water licenses to buy, it's, it's a no-brainer. So it's a no-brainer, but you said something quite key in there, which huh. is not everyone can do. Because they may not have the right soil type or the rainfall, in which case... That makes it a difficult conversation yes. when you're looking at... It makes it a very painful conversation. But the, the world wine map is shifting anyway. If, if we don't push dry farming as the international default position, Mother Nature is going to have it happen anyway. The, 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 the tipping points are here. Um, do you think there's a, there's a case, yes, the, the vineyards are shifting, the climate's changing, people are, are mitigating and they're adapting. And adapting can also mean interventions in the vineyard. One of those is, is for many people, irrigation, and they swear by it. And what you're saying is, that's not right, that's not going to happen. And so this is, this is a, a very different well, but But it's wrong on, what I said yesterday, actually, is that even if you don't believe that irrigation dilutes terroir and you know by having the root mass in the top even if you don't believe that irrigation uh, changes the microbiology of the soil and thus affects the taste of the of the grape and the wine even if you don't believe that it artificially increases yields the argument that there's not enough water left to irrigate a luxury crop stands alone you don't even have to believe in the, in the science behind what irrigation does to our soil and to, to, the, to the wine. If you just look at the numbers of, of, you know, we should not be watering a luxury crop. We should not be putting Chardonnay before wheat or livestock. Um, we have to, the wine industry, we're so, uh, and understandably, uh, enclosed in, in our little world. And we, we have to get out of this mindset and put ourselves in a much larger context. Wine is a crop. We have to make that connection. Um, on a global scale, yes. how many people are using this dry farming practice right now? Oh, a lot. And that's, again, one of my 
one of my favorite arguments that can, I can am allowed to use in favor of dry farming is that we have pockets of dry farmers in the most arid regions around the world showing us you could, it can be done. You've got uh, in Scotland and in South Africa a huge community who, who, who dry farm. You have the Oregon uh, coalition who will only dry farm. You've got um, people, I've met people in India yesterday who came up to me and said, oh, you spoke to my heart, we, we, that's what we do in India, blah, 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 blah. Uh, in, in Israel, in Lebanon, in, um, in Napa Valley, there's Zinfandel that hasn't seen water since 1895. Okay. So you've come to this conference, you've, yes. you've made the case. What's the next step for you in this journey? Uh, the next step for me is to sit down with my little team and figure out the next three or four outputs we want. I've been so busy the past couple of years speaking and researching and writing. I want to actually now come out with some tools. Okay. I would like to come up with a transitioning package, you know, a methodology that can be transposed to different regions around the world. So I'd like to get some funding and some partners together, a small team, and come up with some really useful uh, outputs this year. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thank you, I need it. Thank you. Bye.